Hi, this is Risa and welcome to my Stitch Along series. Don't forget to support my channel by subscribing and clicking on the watermark logo on the bottom right of this video. This is a Stitch Along of Tatiana Popova's kit called Autumn's Birthday. Her kit is available on Etsy and I've provided the link below in the description. This Stitch Along accompanies my kit review which you can watch by clicking on the link above. Here's the artwork that's already printed on fabric that is included in the kit and she wraps it around a wax paper, I guess, to provide stiffness during shipping. What you will also need is some muslin cloth that you can use as backing. I usually do that for my silk embroidery projects. Now, all you need to do is stitch that to the back of the artwork. Make sure you don't pierce the artwork itself and all I do here is just simple running stitches. As you can see here, I just have simple running stitches along the outside of the artwork. And here I'm going to mount it on a hands-free frame, uh, which you can also buy on Etsy. And I've done a review and instruction on how to set up the frame, which you can also watch by clicking on the link above. You'll need a straightening iron to iron the ribbons. You'll also need some silk fabric paint. I am using Giovanna from Croil. You'll need, of course, a plate to mix the colors. And I also have pro markers that I'm going to use in some of the cases. If you've watched my kit review, you'll know that I've spent an hour at least wrapping these ribbons onto DMC bobbins here, and I've organized it by their color family as each color has different size widths of ribbons included in the kit. I'm going to start by weaving the basket. Now remember, this kit has 32 flowers that you will be stitching, hence it's called an advanced level kit. And the rule of thumb is to begin with the background flowers and leaves first, and then the foreground. So this gives it sort of a three-dimensional look. I'm going to start the basket with 2mm light yellow ribbon, and I'm going to cut out the size of about 30 centimeters. Um, remember to cut it at an angle of about 45 degrees, and then iron all your ribbons before you start stitching. Um, here are the needles that come in the kit and I'm going to use a number 24 which will be a perfect size for this 2mm ribbon. What you need to do is as you can see insert the needle into the ribbon and pull the ribbon out a bit and that will arrest the ribbon and then at the end you just fold over and then insert the needle in the center pull it through and leave a little bit of a square at the end. To weave the basket, I'm using the 2mm ribbon and I'm stitching straight stitches here, just along the lines of the basket in the artwork in the background, as you can see. So just simple straight stitches all over the horizontal lines. Now I'm going to take a 7mm light yellow ribbon. There's two, four and seven in the kit. I'm ironing it. I'm taking a much longer ribbon length here now because I'm just going to be wrapping the ribbons around the stitches that I've already made. So I'm just going to do whip stitches here and all you need to do is go under the stitch that you'd already made and keep wrapping it around. So this gives the basket a nice um, sort of woven cane look. Now that I'm done, I'm going to insert the needle into the fabric and then insert the needle again between the muslin and the main fabric and cut off a tail. I'm going to stitch all of that when I'm done. Now the next thing to do is to dye the ribbons and I have some water here in a stopper I have a paintbrush that's included with the Giovanna basic kit if you buy that and it's meant for silk cloth. I'm taking a little bit of the brown, adding some water here. You don't need a lot um, and what I'm going to do now is just see what shading I want. So this is just with water. That's a bit too dark. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to lighten the brown. So I have a very light brown that I'm going to use. and 
now just make sure you have some kitchen towel ready and first thing to do is to just sort of dab these whip stitches with plain water so just soak it in water make sure it's not a lot you don't want to soak the entire fabric and then you add the first layer of brown very lightly it doesn't need to be dark remember once it's dark you can't remove it so just sort of start with a very light shade and then you can keep adding layers to it so you can see i have a little bit of dark brown here on this corner i'm going to paint as well to give it some shadow and again sort of just keep adding now what you need to do with dyeing ribbons is make sure you dry them with a hairdryer now I'm going to take the 4 mm ribbon and weave it through these whip stitches here so I'm going to start here at the top as you can see I've gone over under over and around and then over and under and you just keep weaving and it's actually really fun to do I must say uh, quite a bit of mindfulness here when you do this so I'm just gonna just weave away the 4 mm ribbon size and when I'm done I'm gonna insert it into the fabric here now here again I'm using 4 mm for a couple of rows and then I'm gonna switch to a 7 mm as you can see the width of the ribbon is slightly wider as per Tatiana's design this gives the basket a little bit more texture and volume uh, so that's what I'm doing and then I'm going to shift back to the 4mm to end off. Now here again I am going to dye the ribbons. Uh, again having a little bit more of a darker brown to the right side um, and lighter sort of ribbons on the left side. So you need to understand sort of how the light is sort of falling um, onto the artwork and uh, essentially just follow along next I'm going to use a 13 mm green ribbon to stitch a leaf under the handle here and a 7 mm mustard green ribbon to stitch the leaves here under that handle I'm going to stitch a ribbon stitch here so if you are new to ribbon embroidery you just simply insert the needle in the center of the ribbon then you can use a needle to create a pointy tip like so and to end off in the back you just insert it between the mustard and the main fabric here again ribbon stitches for the underlying ribbon here and create pointy tips with the help of a needle with the 7mm light yellow ribbon I am going to stitch straight stitches or actually stem stitches along the edges of the handle here. And with the same ribbon I am going to wrap the previous stitches with whip stitch here again to create some body for the handle. With 2mm ribbon, I'm going to stitch twisted ribbon stitches in straight rows here and really close to each other as you can see. Uh, you can either go under the ribbon and across or what I'm doing here is stitching on one side and then coming out on the same side and stitching the other. So that way you don't use up too much ribbon in the kit. So keep watching carefully. So coming out on the same side as you had gone in. As you can see twisted ribbon stitch essentially means twisting the ribbon uh, into a tube. Now I am going to dye the handle quite the same way and with the same brown that I had mixed earlier. First I'm dabbing it with just plain water and then a very light brown and I'm using the kitchen towel on the side so that it doesn't ruin the underlying ribbons that have been already embroidered and making sure that sort of there's not too much moisture in the underlying fabric so here we go i'm just adding a little bit of shading and adding darker brown shades as i go and 
really this is up to you this is your artistic expression here that you have an opportunity to to show Moving on to the flowers, I'm going to use a mix of 7mm and 4mm ribbons and I'm going to use variated yellow here and just yellow ribbons. I'm going to stitch the sunflower using ribbon stitches and straight stitches alternating between the two. Uh, the straight stitches are used more like background stitches for the petals. Here is a sort of a side ribbon stitch, a straight stitch, another ribbon stitch here and you can alternate between the dark yellow and the light yellow 7mm ribbons and in between I'm going to use a few of the 4mm ribbons like you can see here. Using the 4mm and 2mm black and brown ribbons I am going to stitch French knots in the center so now for French knot all I'm going to do is wrap one loop around the needle and insert it. Now make sure you hold the other end of the ribbon so that you get a nice tight French knot. So I'm going to start with the 4mm here as you can see and then move to the 2mm brown ribbons along the edges and as I fill in I will use the 4mm black here and then move on to the 2mm to fill in the center. Using the same brown paint that I had ready for the basket, I am going to dye this ribbon here in the background. If you look at the picture, you'll see that this particular sunflower has a darker look to it uh, because it's in the background or perhaps maybe it's a sunflower that's wilting, so it gives it um, an interesting look in the overall picture and artwork. And here again, just completing the sunflower ribbons in the background so remember we are stitching all the background flowers first in this project now in this corner i am going to stitch raised loop stitches um, because you can see that the foreground teddy bear flower petals are pushing against this background sunflower so it gives it a realistic look Make sure you dye the petals uh, and dry it before you stitch the center of the sunflower. So here I am using pro markers to give some highlights to this particular sunflower. I'm going to use 4mm, 13mm and 7mm green ribbons and the 2mm green ribbons to start stitching the leaves on the right side of the artwork here. I'm using ribbon stitches to stitch these particular ribbons with 4mm and using Pro Marker to dye the tips of the leaves. I want sort of a lighter shade in the center of the leaf, so I'm going to just dye the tips as you can see here and it gives it a nice three dimensional look. Again, ribbon stitches to stitch this leaf and then I'm going to come back up at the middle part of that ribbon stitch and stitch a straight stitch. Moving on to the 2mm mustard ribbons, I am going to stitch the next set of leaves here using again just ribbon stitches. Using a 4mm dark olive ribbon, I am going to 
stitch, a twisted ribbon stitch here to form the stem for this particular sunflower. So I'm inserting it into the fabric and I'm going to come back up somewhere in the middle and pull it and insert it or couch it um, so that I get that little curve that I want. Here's a special Tatiana Popova technique of stitching leaves. You use a 2mm couching ribbon and a 7mm green ribbon here. And as you can see, I've taken the 2mm and I'm using it on the inside of a ribbon stitch. And that way you get a nice fold um, for the leaf. So I definitely encourage you to get Tatiana's books because this particular instruction is not there in the instruction list for the kit. Now in this case, I am stitching a ribbon stitch or side ribbon stitch for two ribbons side by side so that it looks like it's one ribbon folding inwards and I'm using the brown dye to give it a withered look. Uh, using 7mm ribbon, I am going to stitch brown withered leaves here and I'm going to dye it using the green pro marker. Now here at the center is the sunflower that doesn't have uh, the yellow petals and more of it is just using French knots in the center and I'm alternating between the bright green and the olive or mustard leaves for this particular sunflower and using 2mm black ribbon I am going to stitch one loop of French knots around the edges and then a 7mm black ribbon to stitch one loop of French knots around the center and right at the very center using 2mm again. I've decided to stitch the nasturtium flowers here starting with 7mm for the smaller flowers here and 13mm for the larger flowers. Here I'm going to stitch looped ribbon stitches. Uh, the instructions don't explain how to do it. They just say you have to refer to books by Ann Cox. Um, but loop ribbon stitches are really very simple to do. There are, as you can see, an inverse ribbon stitch where you come out of the fabric, fold over a pin like I've done, and then insert a ribbon stitch right at the tip where you came out. So just watch carefully how to do it. It's really simple and it's really beautiful. For the stamens in the center, I'm gonna stitch tassel stitch. Um, what you do is you come in from the front of your embroidery work and you leave a little bit of a tail. Come back up about a millimeter and then go back in inside the same hole where you came in and arrest that thread that was sticking out. Bring your needle up again, this time to form another loop. Go back in about a millimeter, come back where you came up. So go back a bit by a millimeter and then insert your needle where the loop was formed and that would arrest the loop in place. Now you do a few of these, about two or three of these loops before you cut them off. So here again, I'm going back into the fabric, coming back out and then arresting that loop by going in where I came out the last time. Here I'm using a 13mm to create the nasturtium and remember when you do the loop stitch, when you insert this particular ribbon stitch, you insert it over the underlying ribbon so you arrest that underlying ribbon into a loop as you can see here. And once again, stitching the stamens with tassel stitch.
The kit includes less than 20 centimeters of this 20 mm light green ribbon. And so, as you can see, I don't have much ribbon to work with, so I'm gonna cut it off, hold the tail as I pull it out of the fabric, insert the needle first, and then insert the ribbon. So this is a good way of working with really short lengths of ribbons. Uh, here I'm pulling it through and then I'm just going to adjust the ribbons to form the leaf and then stitch the tails at the back of the fabric. Here I'm using 7mm dark green ribbon uh, using a side ribbon stitch here to create a nice little fold for the ribbons and here again ribbon stitches. Now I'm using a 13mm light green ribbon that's included in the kit to create the rest of the ribbons here under this sunflower. Here again I've run out of 13mm dark green ribbon so I'm using the same technique holding the tail behind, inserting the needle first and then pulling through as you can see here. Now what I'm going to do is use some dark green toning thread that's in the kit and I'm going to stitch the ribbons in place so under the flap so that you know you don't see it and make a very small stab stitch so it's pretty much invisible and I'm just going to stitch um, the back as well while I'd, I'm at it. So don't forget to stitch the little ribbon tails at the back of your embroidery every once in a while um, so that when you are stitching the flowers next time they don't get pulled out or get caught. Here's a quick look of what I've completed so far. I'm super happy with my progress and thank you for watching along and I hope you're stitching along with me. Here you can see I've finished some leaves here on the right, some of the sunflowers. I've also finished most of the nasturtium flowers here except for one I think left on the left. And now I'm going to move on to stitching the left side of the flower. I've already started stitching some of the hidden petals here and also the stems here. And how you do it is essentially just use a 2mm twisted ribbon stitch and insert it into the fabric. I'm going to use 4mm, 7mm saffron yellow, variated yellow and brown ribbons here to stitch the sunflowers. I've already completed some of them and I, as you can see I've used a mix of variated yellow and saffron colors. Now for the stem I've used a French knot here and then a straight stitch over to make the bud. Again, to dye the ribbons, first dab it with normal just water and then use the light brown or beige dye paint that you have ready. And don't forget to dry these petals before you stitch the center of the sunflower.
se fue con la ola del mar. Pregúntale y si mi amor se fue. Now I'm going to stitch the gorgeous orange Rudbeckia flowers here with 7mm saffron and yellow ribbons. I'm pretty much doing the same thing using ribbon stitches and straight stitches as you can see here and the straight stitches sort of form a background for the petals. I'm going to use Pro Marker pens to dye the ribbons here because they're alcoholic based they nicely spread across the ribbons here as I wanted to so I'm using the mandarin pro marker and amber colors so I'm using first amber and then the mandarin color to give it the highlights here I'm stitching one loop French knots with 4mm brown and 2mm black ribbons now I'm going to start stitching the gorgeous teddy bear sunflowers and let me tell you how to begin as you can see I'm starting with the center with the light green ribbons and then using twisted ribbon stitch to stitch straight stitches here. First I'm going to stitch it flat and now I'm going to do kind of a loop stitch or you can say the tassel stitch here. You can see how I'm doing it carefully. Essentially I bring up the ribbon, create a loop, bring the needle up where it came up initially and then essentially arrest that little loop in place. Again, you can use a needle to sort of hold that loop in place as you stitch the second stitch to arrest it. Again, twisting the ribbon. Here I'm using a saffron color, so I'm mixing the yellow and the saffron 2mm ribbons here. So you'll be using mostly 2mm ribbons when uh, stitching these gorgeous teddy bear sunflowers. For the petals, I'm going to use a mix of all of the 2mm ribbons that are included in the kit, including a little bit of the brown to give it sort of that withered petal look here. And I will mix in some 4mm saffron and yellow ribbons to give it a little bit more texture. I'm going to start with the brown 2mm ribbons to stitch long ribbon stitches here. And then I'm weaving in, as you can see, 4mm mustard green ribbons. Um, this is only because the back of the teddy bear flower, from what I can see, has a darker shade. So I'm just adding in these ribbon stitches and straight stitches, as you can see. Now, after you finish the first row, you dye the first row with the amber pro marker, like I'm doing. And I am now going to highlight it with mandarin pro marker colors here. I'm moving on to stitching the second row of petals with looped ribbon stitches here, mixing in the variated yellow, the bright yellow, and the 4mm brown, as you can see. So just stitching in in between, filling up the space with the second row of looped ribbon stitches. And again, after finishing the second row, I'm going to dye the ribbons with the two shades of orange that I have. The third row is also stitched with looped ribbon stitches um, and you can use a mix of the yellow 2mm and 4mm ribbons. Here I'm using again the light yellow to give it some sort of impression of light touching the teddy bear flowers. For the fourth row of petals, I am stitching raised ribbon stitch. So essentially these are ribbon stitches which you raise off the fabric with a little stem. So essentially you get that nice loopy look that teddy bear flowers have. So I'm learning a lot by 
stitching these teddy bear flowers with Tatania's instructions here. I hope you're learning uh, them too. I, I must say that I got this particular kit primarily for the teddy bear flowers. I think they're just gorgeous and I haven't seen other uh, ribbon embroidery artists embroider these flowers. The final stitch for the teddy bear flowers is to stitch wasp ribbon stitches. Now this is again a stitch that is not explained in the instructions that's included in the kit but it's there in the book. So essentially you just stitch a ribbon stitch, insert the needle in the center and you can see you get a nice little tip here and then you hold that tip and insert your needle back close to where you had come up and keep holding it and when you let go you'll see that it has a nice little tip and you can keep doing this uh, right around the center with using different uh, colored ribbons. Now make sure that you use the height of that wasp stitch where it folds um, at about the same height as the last loop stitch of the last row so that it doesn't look too long or too high compared to the rest of the flowers. And then finally you just dab it or dye it with the Pro Markers to give it that nice deep orange look at the center of the flower. And there it is. Doesn't it look gorgeous? Don't forget to leave a comment and support my channel if you like this particular part of the video especially. And don't forget to subscribe of course. So let's move on to some more of the background ribbons. Here you can see I'm using a mustard toning thread to tone the fold of this particular ribbon and of course don't forget dyeing all of the lovely veins to give it a natural look. Here again is Tatiana's signature leaf design and she calls it the Victoria Amazonica stitching technique and she has used it based on the Victoria Amazonica flower which is one of the biggest water lilies in the world. With this technique uh, Tatiana was trying to represent the high vertical borders of the leaves of these water lilies and I think she's done a great job of it. I love it. I love the fact that I've learned how to make these leaves and I'm sharing them with you. Here I'm going to stitch a half bow stitch as you can see you come out onto the fabric fold the ribbon a little bit and just stitch a ribbon stitch in the center so you get these beautiful little folds and in the center just one loop French knots would be great. Here's a second progress view of how much I've completed. Thank you for sticking along for so long and I hope you're stitching along with me. As you can see, I finished a second teddy bear sunflower as well. 
here I'm stitching tassel stitches again to create the stamens for this particular flower. Next I'm going to stitch the sideways sunflower here starting with the leaves here at the base of the sunflower using looped ribbon stitches and then I am going to stitch the flat petals first with 7mm and 4mm saffron and yellow ribbons and then once that's done I'm going to first dye these petals at the bottom first with water and then with a little bit of brown and then dry it. Next I am going to highlight the base of these petals before I stitch these French knots. Now for the top to get the folded look I am going to stitch looped ribbon stitches here as you can see and that sort of looks like it's folding over the other petals. I'm going to stitch the last of the teddy bear flowers. It doesn't have a center like the one here. Uh, so it has an off center sunflower as you can see here. So most of the petals are on the right here and a little bit on the left. So I'm going to start again by stitching the radial ribbon petals. And then of course after the first row dyeing it and basically following the same process as the last teddy bear flower. The second row will be sort of looped ribbon stitches. Again dyeing that, mixing in a little bit of the foramen flowers as you can see. And here I'm going to do a third and fourth row even at the top but not so much at the bottom. Here I'm using 4mm ribbons and I'm going to fill it in with 2mm ribbons. So these are um, twisted ribbon stitches there just to give it a little bit more texture and then I'm doing a fourth row with the light yellow ribbons so essentially just getting to the point where I think the center of the flower should be. Finally, I'm going to stitch the large central leaf with the hood stitching technique. Here I've made one as a sample already. Again, this particular technique is not in the instructions that are in the kit, but they are available in the book. So I'm going to show you how I've done this. And that's with the 32mm and this is with the 20mm green silk ribbons. So first of all, you will need to keep your green toning thread ready and you take here I'm going to 
essentially tell you how I've measured it. So this is about seven centimeters. So the full length of the ribbon is about 15 centimeters and then I trimmed the ends. Um, so that's about how much you would need to cut and then you will cut the ribbons down to size. So essentially to do the hood stitching technique, I am going to stitch whip stitches here starting at the folded end. So you just fold the ribbon in half and stitch whipped stitches here and st stitch them close to the edge. Try to keep it at the same line and stitch them uh, close if you can. So that way you'll avoid any stitches being seen when you fold over here, fold over the ribbon. Um, so that's one's complete. And so keep all of them ready and leave a little bit of the thread behind. Here I've stitched one leaf already and I'm going to show you how to stitch the second one. So I've kind of measured it out and I've measured these ones with the 20 mm silk ribbons. And now I'm going to pull the ends of the tail of the thread that I had left. And here running stitches at the bottom of the hooded uh, ribbon stitch here. And what you can do is just pull that thread to gather the ribbons and that gives it a nice natural sort of folded look to the leaf. Now in the very center, I am stitching some twisted rope stitches here. So essentially you take a 2 mm ribbon, twist it and then fold it in the center at the height of the rope stitch that you want. So again, I'm showing it to you. You just fold it and let it automatically twist together and you can help it by twisting it further. And there it is, this gorgeous autumn's birthday embroidery kit by Tatiana, which I've also framed and hung up in the house. I hope you found this uh, video useful and that you'll be tempted to try this kit. Don't forget to click on the subscribe, like and notification buttons. Thank you again for watching this video and see you again next time. Bye bye.